Hey yo, what's up everybody? It's Tuna. So in today's video, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of background on the lead mechanic because I think there has been a lot of information out there in general about like all the scarabs and all the new juice that we have in Endgame, but not many people have been talking about the lead mechanic. And I think it's actually going to be one of the craziest lead mechanic we've seen in a long, long time. Um, that is because we have access, you know, to a new crafting mechanic. And this crafting mechanic is actually giving us ways to craft items in ways we have never actually been able to do in the past. So a little bit about the background of the league. Ultimately, as you kill monsters that are haunted, you can configure them and they become harder because of that. So you'll be able to sort of like kill monsters, collect their corpses and configure them in your graveyard in order to craft special items with properties granted by them. So yeah, you kill those monsters and then you'll be able to store a limited amount of them. And that limit is actually 60. I do feel like 60 is not that many, but there are ways for you to basically get those corpses, put them inside of a coffin and then put them in your stash. That's like a little, I think two by well, one by two item. They'll just be able to put in your, in your stash and store them that way. But you know, it'll force us to use a lot of those coffins. If we are getting to the point where we can just like spam target farm them and in general get all of those. So we're, we're probably getting into a situation where it's kind of like harvest, where we'll just have like maybe like a few quad tabs of just of just corpses and saving them and be able to search for them and trade for them as well, which is actually one of the cool things about the league that, you know, if you actually don't like crafting, you can of course like farm for specific corpses and just like sell them to people. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. So in general, okay, like you're able to sort of like get these types of corpses, but the, the good thing about them is that like you can actually target farm them and they have provided us with um, nodes on the Atlas passive tree for the lean mechanic during the lean mechanic, which is the first time we've actually been um, getting that. Uh, but yeah, like it, it's, it's like the crafting potential for this league is insane because um, there are ways to essentially create recipes with different corpses in order to deterministically craft certain things. And of course, like, uh, you know, Mark Roberts, who is the game director for Path of Exile 1, has of course said uh, that there are ways to create insanely broken crafts and recipes as well, that he really welcomes players to search for them and find them. And of course, like create some pretty crazy items. So I'm really excited about that, honestly, uh, because um, the potential for it is pretty damn insane, especially since they have shown us some pretty cool and crazy crafts that are um, going to be providing you with insane amounts of power. All right, so I have found a screenshot here of some of the crafts so I can just kind of talk you guys through them and explain a little bit like what they do, right? So you can see 600% increased chance to, uh, to gain a fire modifier. It's pretty nice and you have like a base chance to roll those fire modifiers, of course, which is also like it's tied to the weight of um, the modifiers on your item. So you're going to have like a 60, 600% increased chance to roll those fire modifiers. Um, which is, you know, it's it's pretty nice. And you have, of course, like life as well and that sort of stuff. But re that really ties into uh, here. What you see is uh, the plus 50 to speed modifier tier rating. And what that means is it's like it's it, it's insane because what it does is it cuts out lower tier modifiers of that. So, for example, if you get a high enough rating, now, you will not be able to actually roll modifiers below a certain tier. So if that rating is high enough, you will not be able to roll modifiers below tier 2 movement speed or something like that if you're trying to craft clubs or T2 attack speed, for example. And of course, you can combine this with other corpses. And by the way, this does not guarantee that you will be rolling a speed modifier, which is why you have to pair it with, for example, something like this, which has a percent increased chance of rolling that modifier. And uh, because you can actually combine all of all of these things together and you can make like a whole chain of corpses and recipes and all that kind of crazy stuff, that means that you'll be able to target specifically modifiers on items, which then can also be uh, fractured, as you can see here, 25% chance to fracture an explicit modifier. And you can stack this as many times as you want. Now, I assume this corpse is gonna be very rare. Yeah, don't expect to be able to um, get many of these but I, I I do hope that we'll get to a point where we can fracture multiple modifiers on items and they have confirmed that you can actually get yeah multiple fractured modifiers on items which is pretty damn crazy but then there's also other crafts which are just completely busted like plus one explicit modifiers for example which means that you'll be able to get seven mod items 
this is the first time we've seen anything of the sort in Path of Exile. So, yeah, also like five to quality and that sort of stuff. But there are many, many more crafts that they still haven't shown us because, um, you know, outside of the reveal trailer, they haven't really gone through any of this stuff. And I've just sort of been having to like look through all of these screenshots and sort of like figure out what is going on. So, but the main really like the crazy thing about the mechanic is here, this like modifier tier rating. It's the first time we've had anything of the sort. Um, and it's something that players have asked for a long time. You know, like why do we have to roll uh, T9, you know, like uh, stunning block recovery on uh, item level 86 base. Well, now you won't be able to roll lower tier modifiers of things that you do want on those bases by applying a lot of these, you know, you know by stacking these modifier tier rating things. And of course, players are not gonna need to find out exactly how many of these you need in order to get like sort of guarantee not to get the shit mods. But um, as far as we know, you know, for now, we're just gonna sort of have to test it and all that kind of stuff, which leads me into uh, my Atlas strategy for this league. All right, boys, so here it is. This is the Atlas that I'm planning on playing after I've progressed into T16s. So um, if you guys wanna see like an, an Atlas more for early progression, there's a video that I made about three days ago that, um, you know, it's going to be basically detailing how I'm going to be getting into T16. So check that one out if you want to know just generally how to progress from, you know, white maps all the way into reds. This is going to be more of a reroll that I go into once I have my first, um, you know, Atlas preset, which thank God that we got that. It's just the best thing ever. It opens up so many possibilities for farming because, you know, in case like maybe something goes wrong or I want to farm something else or I just get bored of one thing or whatever or I want to go for my progression atlas or map farming atlas, aka, you know, to drop like maps and that sort of stuff into um, my endgame atlas, then I could do I could do that just like with the click of a button. So, you know, thank you so much, GG, for that change. It's absolutely insane. And I'm just glazing, but yeah. Um, so I'm going to be taking all of the Necropolis nodes. And um, as I previously mentioned, like you are getting so much power from these and it's really nice to be, uh, getting nodes that affect the league mechanic in the league itself. There are nodes here on the top right, which gives you um, corpses in your maps have a 100% increased chance to have unique item crafting outcomes. So you're able to actually craft uniques. I don't know whether these are good, but I'm going to be testing every single one of them so that I can kind of like, um, I can kind of tell you guys whether they're good or not after the first couple of days of testing. Uh, but I, I just think it's in, it's going to be insane. Like, no matter what, like, this mechanic looks like it's going to be Harvest 2.0, basically, with items. So that's that's really exciting. This one is, Corpses in your maps have 100% increased chance of modifier tier rating crafting outcomes. So that's um the thing that I was, like, showing earlier, you know, the tier things. And this is going to be the main one that I really want to get. I want to get as many corpses with that plus, uh, you know, 100 to modifier tier rating. And this is the percentage chance. So these are the main nodes that I want to rush for crafting. And then all of the other nodes on the tree are going to be sort of enhancing the mechanic as well. Like here, haunted pack leaders in your maps have a 50% chance. Um, sorry, let me just like zoom into that a little bit so you guys can see. Have a 50% increased chance for rares, uh, to, to be rare, sorry. And 50% chance to spawn a tormented spirit when you collect the corpse in your map. What does that mean? To be honest, I don't really know. We'll have to find out. <laughs> but it can't be bad, right? Surely it can't be bad. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, the next nodes that we are getting here are the Lantern of Armor has a 30% increased chance for devoted modifiers. Pretty cool. Devoted modifiers are, you know, interesting to say the least. Now they have shown us like a couple of devoted modifiers. I can't like reference them off the top of my head, but I think uh, there are still some things that we have no idea about, right? Like, as I said, there's so little information about the league mechanic as of right now. And my intent, this league start, is basically to rush these nodes as soon as possible to complete my atlas so that I can start farming the league mechanic and, you know, make content about it, of course, but in general, just learn more and more about it because it's a new, fresh thing. And I'm really excited to, uh, you know, figure all of that stuff out. But yeah, haunted modifiers in the Lantern of Armor are a higher tier. As well, so that's uh, you know we're gonna be getting higher tier modifiers in the Lantern of Armor, and that's pretty cool. And then here we will be getting haunted monsters. Um, let me just uh, zoom in that a little bit. Haunted monsters with unresolved anguish in your maps have a twenty-five percent increased chance uh, to leave an additional corpse. So I think this is just gonna be like a twenty-five percent more corpse multiplier 
and which is uh, you know gonna accelerate the the pace at which I get the crafts. It's pretty cool. And this one is gonna give you a grave keeper's boon on collecting corpses, which is like basically just gonna be like a little bit of a buff as I collect corpses. But maybe if I collect enough corpses per map, it's gonna give me a consistent buff of 10% life regeneration and 30 miles per second. But honestly, it's like I'm just gonna unspec that for the most part, like probably, and then just focus on the small nodes because the small nodes are also gonna be very strong to farm the lean mechanic. But since it's not a sure bet, what, uh, what I need to do is have a strategy around the lead mechanic that is also synergistic with it in order to, you know, sustain myself, of course, because I'm going to need some currency to upgrade my build and all that kind of stuff. So what am I going to do? Um, I'm going to spec all the map nodes. The map nodes are super important. I think anybody should spec the map nodes. I think this league, we're going to get like a drought of maps in general, especially early. And that's why I'm going to be taking those. Now... Singular focus is a tricky one because as far as I know, if you are specced into singular focus, you're not going to be dropping T17 maps. And I think T17 maps are going to be not only very sought after, but also quite expensive. So, um, yeah, I, I th honestly, I think this kind of sucks because I do want to run one map. I don't really enjoy running variety maps. So we'll have to sort of gauge whether we want to be specking into singular focus or not. Uh, so that's a little bit tricky for sure. But the next thing that I want to be farming is um, influence. Now, influence, of course, early league is just busted and they have buffed the shit out of it by adding an extra 20% pack size here on the small nodes. And of course, the like the, the increased modifiers on your maps and that sort of stuff. But they actually have added scarabs, which substantially buff the lead mechanic. All right, so if you guys don't know, I also released a video the other day sort of going through um, a lot of the scarabs uh, and talking about uh, basically some of the synergies in there. So like, if you're interested in that, you know, check that out. But this is the scarab that I'm talking about. It's a scarab of monstrous lineage, which is going to give you 40% increased magic pack size. And it's a rusted scarab, but it's limited to one. It looks like GGG knew just how busted this was going to be. So yeah, this one is going to be giving you essentially like uh, a ton more influence monsters because the influence monsters are mostly actually magic monsters, meaning, you know, altars are going to be um, really, really buffed up because of that. So I'm going to be running as many of these as possible. Hopefully they are not too expensive, but since Mark Roberts actually did say that um, they're, they're very common scarabs now. So I'm really, really hoping to be able to use these wherever possible. There is another Scarab, however, which is a big question mark that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use because it, it is gilded and I don't really know whether it's actually worth it to use it yet uh, because of like, I don't know how much it's going to cost, but influence monster packs in area have 40% increased pack size. Um, so that's technically like actually getting 80% um, pack size on altars, which altars, of course, give you a ton of currency early. There is no more sextants. But there are still Chaos Orbs, Fusings, and all that kind of stuff. And Scarabs as well. Uh, scarabs, hopefully, are going to be plentiful. And I'm, we're going to be dropping a lot of them from the Altars as well. So that's what I'm really hoping, is to buff the pack size in my maps by a lot. And in turn, get a lot of currency from the Altars. Which is kind of like, you know, the old strategy that I was running with um, uh, growing hordes but in this case it's just going to be really really focused on getting influence pack size through searing exarch now you could also go for eater of worlds but it depends like you don't really want to go for eater of worlds unless eldritch ickers are much more expensive than embers because embers i assume like early on they are very expensive so selling them you know they wanted two it's just going to be like one of my main money makers and then on top of that hopefully the additional drops that we get from um, you know, the altars in general. But then, because we are stacking so many monsters, we want to grab as many of these scarab nodes as possible. And you can see that I have gone through and grabbed as many of these as possible. So yeah, I've gone and grabbed. Uh, scarabs found in your maps are more likely to be of lesser common varieties. And then all of these like small nodes where possible too. I haven't grabbed any of these yet because I, I don't know which scarabs are going to be the most expensive. And of course, I'm going to be wanting to get more of the expensive ones. But you can be sure that they're most likely, like, people are going to be looking for divination and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, also, I think Harbinger, for example, is going to be a really nice one to spec into. But we, I don't know just yet exactly which one I'm going to be specking into there. So, yeah. And the rest is going to be just more, like, increased scarabs found in your area. 
And then this one is like kind of not the best one for this strategy because I'm mostly buffing um, monsters, uh, you know, magic monsters. But this one is going to be giving you a 50% increased chance to drop scarabs from rare monsters. So in case that you do have um, rare monsters in your map, they're going to have a heightened chance to drop scarabs. Uh, so that's basically like, that's basically the tree. And I'm not 100% yet sure about this whole like scarab stuff. So it, it'll depend like whether I want to actually spec into that or not. But if I don't spec into the scarab stuff, I'll most likely look into specking into beyond. And I actually have the alternative to spec into beyond. And I think beyond is going to be very good with this strategy because beyond synergizes really well with pack size. And I have pretty much exactly enough points um, to be able to spec into beyond. And, you know, farm tainted currency, which is really, really good early on. But I will definitely absolutely want to be specking into the keystone so that I don't spawn the boss. So that I can just spawn as many of the mobs as possible and blast my maps. And yeah, that is basically what I'm going to be doing on League Start. And if you want to catch up with, you know, my progress and all that kind of stuff, I stream daily on Twitch and I will be streaming also on YouTube. So yeah, I hope to see you guys there. I hope this guy, uh, this video was like a little bit helpful. It wasn't a guide. It was just more an insight on what I plan on doing. And yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a good league start. You guys are the best. Appreciate it. Peace out.